I'm honored to be a part of it, and I look forward to engaging with everyone in the room on a solution to the problem. This is a, a very big subject, and it's a very complex subject, uh, probably a little bit less complex than some people think. Uh, but I'm here to listen, and I, I have very divergent views. I view it as something as a prerequisite of keeping people in the Liberty Coalition that are doing every uh, While e-cigarettes can potentially be an off-ramp for adults that are addicted to combustible tobacco, we can all agree that we can't allow them to become an on-ramp to nicotine addiction and combustible tobacco use for our kids. As the President said, uh, we're here today to listen uh, to you, individuals and organizations that represent many different aspects of this issue. The question of how to regulate e-cigarettes is highly complex, so it's vital to gather an array of perspectives to understand the best way to go about protecting America's youth. We have and we are totally aligned and supportive with the position you took on September the 11th. We think that is a as you put forward, correct. Myself and uh, Senator Merkley have authored, offered uh, legislation that uh, is very consistent with the policy from September, year to September, which is to ban flavors so that we don't have kids getting hooked on nicotine products. We also uh, insist that cartridges are tamper-proof so kids can't add uh, contaminants to the cartridges, but that's uh, very consistent with your, uh, your point of view. We've got almost six million kids addicted to nicotine, and they're getting addicted to nicotine because of flavors. Sixty-six percent of the kids addicted to these products are saying they didn't even know it had nicotine in it. They thought it was just a candy-type product. It's, a, it's the flavor that's drawing the kids in. It's a health emergency. I salute the fact that Jewel has said, we're taking these products off the market because we care about our kids. The kids, the adults, the adults have access. The adults have access to menthol products through Jewel. They have a, 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 a tobacco flavored products. But putting out, putting out cotton candy flavor and, and, and what is it, unicorn poop flavor. I mean, that, 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 look, this is this is kid product. Uh, we have to put the kids first. That has less risk in e-vapor. We think the science argument is very important. That's what we're focused on. The flavors have fueled youth use of these products. And what's particularly concerning is it led to a level of addiction um, that we have never seen even with cigarettes because these products deliver more nicotine more powerfully. So what we're seeing, and others here can talk to you about it in more detail, kids becoming addicted quicker, unable to quit, suffering extraordinary withdrawal so symptoms what would you and for us that was 70 percent of our business so it was a big a big step for us but this is i mentioned prohibit direct access to the product meaning put it behind the counter only employees have access to it second is um, restricting sales to to people 21 years uh, older and older. So 21. Third is restricting the number of um, items they can purchase per transaction. So you can't, one of the problems you have is that um, adult age people are buying multiple, more than they need and then reselling it, um, social sales to underage people. We need to, to restrict that by restricting the number of items they can buy in a transaction. Mr. President, your instincts on September 11th were... So what would you do with uh, this? If we would abide by the law, if the, the law decided to ban flavors, we would abide by that law. We sell exclusively flavors. So the question really is, I don't think we need to...